Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about how does the narcissist roll when it comes to money, okay? There's two ways a narcissist is going to deal with money, okay? The first way, you may be dealing with a narcissist who has money, and this narcissist is going to try to control people with their money, all right? They may try to be a big shot in the beginning, big tips. You know, they want people to roll out the red carpet for them. They could be very showy. This could be the grandiose narcissist or the overt narcissist. So they're always going to be flashing money, flashing what they own, fancy cars or whatever, you know, collectibles they have or anything. They want people to be impressed with what they have so that people treat them differently, that they are special, that they are above other people because of what they have. Also, when you're dealing with a narcissist like this, they, you know, and you marry somebody like this, they may try to control you with money. In other words, they may tell you, well, quit your job. You don't need to work. You know, I got you. I'll pay all the bills and I'll do everything for you. And they want complete control over the money, the bank accounts. They want the house solely in their name. They want control of all assets. And why is that? Because they don't trust you. They don't trust you and they feel today or tomorrow you break up or you get a divorce. They want to know that everything is in their name so that you are not entitled to anything. So they protect themselves that way. All right. They don't come together as a unit where you guys, you know, you work together as, you know, a married couple, let's say, and you have, you put, you work together as one, all right? They don't trust and they feel today or tomorrow something could happen. So they are going to hold the purse strings. And what they do a lot of times too, is they will bank their money and they will spend your money, okay? So this is how narcissists try to get over on someone. And then the other way is they control you because if they are the ones with the purse strings, you have to, you know, adjust your behavior to them or they won't give you money to live on. All right. So this is why you never, ever want to be codependent on a narcissist for money because that's horrible. That's why a lot of people are still with narcissists. People say, well, why can't they just leave the narcissist? Well, guess what? Not everybody can just get up and walk out. And especially if there's children involved, there's children involved and maybe they don't have the money to support themselves or support their children. So they're stuck. They're stuck with putting up with those behaviors from the toxic narcissist who's got the money strings and controlling them with the money, okay? So you have to be very careful. When you get involved with somebody, you have to make sure today or tomorrow you've got your own money so if things don't work out, you're not stuck, you know, you know, in a homeless shelter or, or stuck with the narcissist because you can't get out. So these type of narcissists, you know, they will control with money and they will, you know, depending on how you treat them will depend on how much money they give you. So you constantly have to flatter their ego or maybe do things that you don't want to do because you're afraid that that narcissist is going to starve you with money and not give you money, let's say, to even live on, okay? So that's how it rolls with that type of narcissist, all right? The one that wants to hold the purse strings and who wants to, you know, be the one who says, I'm in charge of all the money and everything. That's so they can control you so that it's not so easy for you to walk out and you are now codependent on them, all right? You got to put up with all their bullshit because you're dependent on that narcissist financially. That's a horrible, horrible way to, to be, okay, or be in that situation. Next, the other type of narcissist that I'm going to talk about is the narcissist, and this is usually the covert narcissist that hides their money and plays the victim. A lot of times what a covert narcissist will do is they're going to play the pauper act. Oh, you know, I don't have a lot of money. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know if my job is going to last. Oh, the house needs so much money. Oh, I have to pay for this for my kid or I have to do that. 
They do the sob story, the crying act. And what is that going to do? That's going to make you feel bad for them. So a lot of times what covert narcissists do is they don't ask you directly for money, but they'll, they'll give you a sob story so that you feel bad for them. And I had a client, he was in a situation like this with a covert narcissist and she was giving him a sob story to the point where he let her live in one of his apartments, all right? She did this whole routine to use him for the apartment. And meanwhile, she was out having a good time for herself. She was out creeping. He caught her creeping, all right? And I said to him, I said, she was using you for that supply of the apartment, a place to live. She didn't really care about you because she was treating him like garbage and she was talking down to him. She was emasculating him. She was making him feel like he was nothing. And she was just purely using him for the apartment. And then she guilt tripped him on top of it. When he finally told her to get out, she guilt tripped him. And this is what they'll do. They'll guilt trip you. Like, how dare you do that to me when you know I'm down or something like that? Okay. And he was starting to have doubts and he was feeling bad. And he was like saying, well, you know, she had a rough childhood. And I, I said, that's not your problem. That's not your problem. This woman is not with you for love. She is using you. She is using you. It's not like she cares for you. She doesn't care for you. She's just using you for the supply that you have, which is that apartment or a covert narcissist. I'll give you guys another example. They're the type that when you go out to eat with them, guess what? They forgot their wallet. Oh, I forgot my wallet. Oh, I wasn't able to get to a bank machine. You know, they, 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 they give you the sob story. So you got to pay the bill, you pay the bill, or they'll tell you, oh, I'll get you later. I'll pay you back later. And then later comes and guess what? They're not bringing it up. Okay. They're not bringing it up. And I had this done to me when I worked at a big investment bank in the city in, you know, the legal department. My boss, who was, you know, a general counsel over there, he asked to borrow $20 from me for lunch, okay? This guy made millions of dollars, and he was asking me for $20 for lunch, okay? He was so cheap. So, and his kid was, like, in a very expensive private school in New York City and everything. So, but what am I going to say? So I said, okay, you know, here's, here's the 20 bucks, Dan, all right? So I gave him the 20 bucks. And the next day, he doesn't bring it up, all right? And the next day after that, he doesn't bring it up. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to let him get away with that. And I said to him, I said, excuse me, Dan, you know, do you have the $20 you owe me? And he turns to me, like, with, with an anger and a disgust face. And he turns to me and he says, what do you think? I wasn't going to pay you back, all right? So this is how narcissists, covert narcissists get. They, they get like that kind of indignant kind of look on their face, like how dare you even ask me for that money or something to that effect. So covert narcissists, they will always like try to play like the victim. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do, this and that, you know, uh, would you ever help me? Sometimes when they feel comfortable enough with you, they may even say, do you think you could help me, you know, and I'll pay you back down the road or something. And they have no intentions of paying you back. Why? Because they feel entitled. They, they feel that maybe you have something that they don't have. They feel entitled or in the case, like with my, my boss, all right, where he was well, better off than I was, he was just flat out cheap and thought he could get over, okay? He thought he could get over, and when I called him out on it, he got very angry about it, okay? Instead of appreciating the fact that I lent him the $20, he thought I was going to be intimidated by him to ask for it, and this is what they try to do. They try to intimidate you to ask for that money back. So, these covert narcissists, you know, they, a lot of them have money, but they pretend that they have nothing. And this is how they manipulate people to get money. And you see this also in families too. When they're trying to kiss up to the family member that has the money, they're going to play like they don't have much, or, you know, they're going to play, you know, like they need help or something like that. And meanwhile, they have a stash of money, but they're not telling the other person that they're trying to manipulate because they want them to feel bad for them and give them money, all right? So 
when it comes to money, narcissists could go either way, all right? So also when it comes to tipping as well, when it comes to tipping, a narcissist, if you're dealing again with a grandiose type of narcissist, they may be a big tipper in the beginning because they're trying to, you know, impress people. Like one of my exes, he used to give $100 tips to the valet and I'd be like, why are you giving him a $100 tip? You know, this is ridiculous. And he just he just loved the attention or used to give $100 tips to the barmaids because he wanted the attention. He wanted to feel like a big shot, all right? Meanwhile, he couldn't afford that, but he did it because he needed that ego fed. He needed to feel like when he walked into that restaurant, people treated him like he was royalty. He was the king coming in. Why? Because of his fragile ego. He wanted to feel like he was a somebody. And then you have the narcissist that is very, very cheap. This is the narcissist that doesn't believe in giving a tip to a waitress or waiter that has killed themselves serving you all night. They feel like, well, that's their job and, you know, they're getting paid and, or they give them a very menial type of tip. They don't want to tip at all because, you know, they're just very, very cheap. A lot of narcissists can be very, very cheap where they, you know, they don't part with a nickel, not a nickel. And it's funny, you know, um, I was watching one of these reality shows where they go on the fancy ship, the charter ships, and they had like this stockbroker guy who went on there and he, he was very narcissistic. And in the end, when it came to tip t- time, he, he blatantly said, well, I was going to give you an extra 5,000, but you know, I, I decided not to, you know, because I didn't feel like everything was up to par. And he had like an attitude. And instead of just giving a tip, he wanted to be obnoxious with it and almost kind of hurt the the crew in making them feel bad when he knows they broke their back for him, but it was a control thing. He wanted to control it like he had the control and he wanted to feel uppity like he's better Okay, like he nothing was ever good enough for him. Like so when a narcissist, you know, gets served or or they're in a type of situation where there's tipping involved, they'll never feel like it's enough, okay? It's enough. They weren't served well enough, okay? So they're always going to hold back and justify it and say, "Oh, well, the service wasn't good enough." This is their way to hold on to their money because their money is their power and to give less to somebody else. The only time a narcissist is going to be flashy with the money is if they want their ego fed. They're ego fed and, you know, they're looking for attention. So that's the way narcissists roll with money, you guys, okay? And like I said, another way they do it too, if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, I've seen this, a narcissist could be generous, very generous in the beginning with money, but understand this, not all narcissists are like this, but if a narcissist is spending money on you in the beginning, they're after something big. They are after something big. And this is how they fool people because they'll say, well, they can't be a narcissist. They were like buying me things and they were doing really, they were spending money on me in the beginning. They can't be a narcissist. They're doing that because they want something big from you. And that big could be moving into your house. That big could be trying to get you to invest in a business. So they're usually after something big financially when they're doing something and they're spending money. But what you'll see is they may spend in the beginning and then they turn cheap as shit and they don't give two nickels. They don't give two nickels later on. And then they expect you to pay for everything. So a narcissist will start out at the top. They may be very flamboyant and spending money because they're trying to portray, you know, they're this great person. They're trying to help you out or they throw you money. And then as the relationship goes on, they don't spend a nickel because, you know, now they got you or they got whatever supply out of you or they didn't get what they ever supply they wanted out of you. And now they're not going to spend anything on you. All right. Or they're not going to spend their money at all. And when you go out, they're going to expect you to foot the bill. They're going to expect you to foot the bill because now they feel like you should be honored to be in their presence. All right. So, like I said, the only time a narcissist is really going to spend that money 
is if they want something big out of you or they're trying to impress people to have their ego inflated, okay? So you guys, understand this. Don't ever give a, a narcissist money because you may never, never see it again. If you do lend them money, make sure you have a promissory note so that you could take him to court if it's a loan. Don't ever, ever lend anybody money, all right? Unless you're married to them or, you know, you're really, you know them a long, long time, all right? And again, get a promissory note with that too to cover yourself. And, you know, narcissists will test you. They will test you with money as well. In other words, they may say, they may start out small. They'll ask for something small. So when you go out with them, you'll see this in dating sometimes with these like narcissists that try to test you. They may say something to you like, oh, you know, can I borrow $20 or something like that? And they feel, they'll say something like, oh, I didn't get to go to a bank machine. Or can I borrow? I, I once had somebody ask me for $4, okay? Oh, you think I could borrow $4? I wasn't able to go to the bank machine. When I told my, my girlfriend and my homeboy about this, they were hysterical laughing, hysterical laughing. Because this is what they'll do. They'll try you. They'll ask you for like $5, $20, and they'll see how, how readily you are to give it to them. And then if you're like, oh yeah, sure, no problem, here you go. Then what they'll do is sometimes they'll pay you back and then they'll ask you again, but they'll ask you for something bigger. They may say something like, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not getting paid this week. You know, you think you could help me like with my phone bill or something like that. And, and then you go and you give them like a hundred dollars and then you never see them again. Okay. This is what happens. You know how many of my friends, my guy friends dealt with narcissists that were asking them the first time they were talking to them, if they would send them gift cards and gift money. Okay. They were blatantly asking them in the beginning, but the dangerous narcissists are the ones that wait. They're the ones that don't ask you for a dime. The real good scammers will not ask you for a dime till at least almost six months or, or a year. And th at this point, they have you hook, line, and sinker because they have love-bombed you for such a long time. You're thinking that they're true blue and that they're really into you, but they were just waiting, waiting to drop the bomb and ask you for help. And at that point, you feel guilty if you don't help them because you feel like this person really is into you, but what they were doing is a, an Academy Award, you know, a presentation to make you think that they're into you. So the bottom line is this, never give anybody, anybody money unless you know them a long time, okay? A long time. And the other thing I wanna bring up is this. When you're dealing with a narcissist, and you see any, if they bring up money any which way, they ask you, do you own, do you rent? Okay, that is a red flag. If they ask you something like, well, how do you pay your bills? That is a red flag. It's none of their fucking business. This is why your mind has to be focused. And I'm gonna do a podcast on this when I have more time about how you have to focus your brain to, to pinpoint if you're dealing with a narcissist, but they will test you to see you know, <clears throat> what your financial situation is, what your financial situation is. And I also had another client that brought up to me when he went out with somebody, what was a deal breaker is when she said to him, oh, I would never put my hand in my pocket. I'm never going to put my hand in my pocket. And he said, just the fact that she felt entitled he said, I would never, ever go out with her again. If that's her attitude and she's showing me that in the beginning, she's going to feel entitled. And I said, you're right. She's going to feel entitled. She's going to feel entitled that you always have to pay. All right. Even if you're a year down the line, you always have to pay. She's not somebody that wants to give at all. Okay. And you'll see this. And the other way you're going to know too, you guys, is like I had another client that helped out somebody he bought her things, you know, to help her out in her apartment. And she was like, she thanked him, but she wasn't appreciative of it. She wasn't, re he's, he was like, you know, I thought she'd be more appreciative of the fact that I was trying to help her get settled and everything. But she was just like, oh, thank you. And like, no big deal. No big deal. Why? Because that particular female covert narcissist expected the world. This is somebody who wanted a Range Rover. This is somebody who was showing him pictures of houses. 
you know, and testing him to see, you know, if he'd say, oh yeah, no, we'll live in a place like that. Next year, I'll have money for that and see what kind of reaction they get out of you. They'll bring up things of money to see whether you, they can manipulate you to get what they want, whatever it could be money-wise. And some of them have big aspirations of living in big houses, fancy cars, And they're going to test you. They're going to show you pictures of these things or they're going to bring it up and they're going to see what's your reaction to it. And if you're like, oh, that's great. I want one of those or yeah, definitely. Or I could afford that. Or if you say something like, well, I can't afford that or something, they're going to like, they're going to throw you to the wind because they're going to be like, okay, this one can't afford it. So this is how they test you too with money. All right. So just be careful. You, again, when you're dating somebody, you guys, remember that you are dating. You are not married to that person. So you don't owe that person anything, okay? You have not made a formal commitment to that person. So it's like this. Never, ever give anybody money unless you know them a long time. I can't say this enough because I've had... People comment and say, I lost 10,000, I lost 20,000. Can I get my money back? And I always tell them, unless you can prove it was a loan, no, you can't get your money back, all right? You have to prove that it was a loan, all right? You have to have some kind of documentation. Otherwise, they're just gonna say it's a gift. So you gotta be able to back it, you guys. This is why I tell you, if you do anything for anybody, get that promissory note signed, all right? So I hope that helps you guys to understand how narcissists roll when it comes to money and, you know, never, ever be codependent on a narcissist. Always, always, always have your own thing, okay? This way, you never have to put up with anybody else's bullshit. You could be like, I'm out of here. I don't have to deal with you ever again, okay? So if this helps you, please hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, Go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Visio where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio. And you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram, the game exp 123 Okay? And have a great day.